So we're back to making marks. And we're back to starting with our warm-up exercises. More free paper. Any newspaper will do. Any marker. Today the shape we're going to be doing is circles. So we can start our warm-up by just making circles. That's why a newspaper is good because you've got so much space. I guess I'm not getting this, sorry, I'm not getting this in the camera. Still trying to figure out where my camera is pointing, sorry. You'll notice it, it doesn't pay to choke up on the pencil or the marker, just stay loose. Well, here's another circle. That's handy. That's the good thing about working in a paper. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to use a different color so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to use pink. What we, I'm going to make this better circle. What I'm going to do is just start going around my circles. Sorry. Around my circles. Getting my hand used to doing free and easy circles. Kind of a trip keeping the camera, being able to watch what I'm doing. I have to watch two things at once. This really frees up your hand, you'll find. In your arm, you want your arm to be loose, your hand to be loose. You don't want any tightness when you're doing as a result of tension. You want free freedom of movement with your whole arm, actually. I can even get another color and be going inside my circles. It ends up being kind of a doodle, as any mark making does. I'll go inside the circles. A marker and working big, or anything that, a big crayon, big fat crayon is also very good. And just keep moving around. Ah, you know, one good thing about working on colored paper. Oh, this isn't going to work. Sometimes if I'm working on a brown paper bag, I'll use a, a Conte pencil or a piece of chalk and I'll make my marks with that. There's a nice little bit of grab that happens with that paper. Another way of loosening up your arm, it's kind of like what we did before, only slightly different. Just making a bunch of circles, mark, dots, I guess you could say on your paper in random spot and then closing your eyes try you, you study your marks your dots kind of see where they are and then close your eyes and try and hit yeah that's what I do I don't go far enough try and hit I'm gonna aim for that one maybe if I put my finger there I can do it better no I'm not far enough I think I'm afraid of overshooting the mark I'm gonna aim at this one Nope. Yeah, I'm, I'm very often too short. I'm going to go to this one over here. Down to that one. Yep, oh, it's getting better. Too far. This is a really good warm-up exercise because you're, you're getting your hand connected with your eyes again. And that's what you can do when you've got lots of paper. Just another clue about warm-ups. This is a good one for doing what we're going to do today, which is circles. Now I have a template here somewhere. Because my paper is flat, I'll just get my pants. I've got a different pencil today. Hopefully it's darker. Um, I can use a template to draw circles. I get a nice set of circles. But do they look round? 
Here I have a circle, a ping pong ball. Is it round? How do you know? You can tell by how my hand is folding around it. That's one way. If I had a very strong light coming to it from one side, which the window is, come, is over there and is lighting up this side, if it was better lighting, you could see that a circle, the clue that a circle has become a round, or is actually a round, is because then I'm just going to do some shading on this side, roughly. When you shade, use shading, that's a hint, a clue, that this is not a circle, it's a round. When you have a ball that is, the only clue you have about this ball is that it's yellow, and that there's a bit of light coming from there, you can see the highlight. And if I put my put something up to it, you can see a shadow, but really it's a very uninteresting object um, to draw. This is what my dog did to my ping, a ping pong ball. The, see the shadows give you clues that it's all chewed up. So light and shade help us to understand the depth, the three-dimensional aspect of a round ball. This would, is a very interesting thing, but very difficult to draw because you've got all these little conical shapes, each with their own shadow and highlight. But it's more interesting to look at and more interesting to draw. Sometimes a ball will have marks on it indicating what it is. Those are clues. But just like we did the other day with our square, it was only a square and didn't become a box until we put another box in behind it, smaller because it's farther away, and then connected the corners. That gave us a box. Adding shading, and we see a three-dimensional aspect to that square to the square becomes a box. A circle becomes a round. Now we can do overlapping with a circle as well. Instead of just having three circles, bang, 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 that's, there's no clues there for our eyes to tell what is this object. But if we draw one circle and another one, overlapping another one, overlapping another one, Maybe I should do that with charcoal so you can see it better. I can get a decent sized piece. Okay. If our circles are overlapping and shaded, maybe I can just shade with my finger. And there's shading. falling behind each one, now we have our eyes can read that these circles are actually three round balls, one behind the other. Um, much more interesting than looking at this. If we draw a circle and somewhere here, I have a plasticine ball. Here it is. I made this plasticine ball. Nice and round. Again, not very many clues that it's not just a circle. So what I did was I took a point and I made a mark around the center like a belt. Now it gives us a clue as to the roundness of this circle, of this ball. So on, on a drawing of this, I would wrap that belt around it. Now it obviously looks round. We call that wrap around lines or directional strokes. So now we could turn this into a, a ball and if the light is coming from above and the shadow is down beneath, it looks very round. But 
in nature, there aren't very many round things. Even an egg isn't actually round, as you know. And, and that's a really good thing to practice with, an egg. Practicing your shading and your it, drawing an egg shape is a, a good practice for drawing faces because heads are egg-shaped. But we won't get into that right now. But eggs are good. If you want to practice doing eggs, that's a good thing. Now, the, the thing is that a cup is definitely got a round. But we don't draw a cup like this usually because the features don't give us very many clues as to what it is. If you painted this, it would look like this. There's our handle. Here's the inside of the cup. Maybe we'll put coffee in it. But, yes, it's a representation of a cup, but not a very interesting one. So when we want to draw that circle, we have a problem because we want to turn it on its side and it's no longer round. What do we do? Easy, not a problem. I'll just show you what we do. When we draw a circle straight on, like we draw a square straight on, it touches the sides of the square in four places. I've drawn that here. It touches the sides of the square in four places evenly because it's a perfect square in a perfect circle. A cir perfect circle and a perfect square, presumably. Now we turn it away from ourselves. It's no longer a perfect square, nor is it a perfect circle. It's an ellipse. And how do we do that? I'm just going to quickly show you. This line of our square is long because it's close to us. This line of our square is short. And I'm going to exaggerate this because it's far from us. Now we'll draw the sides of our green paper, and that's what we have when we turn it. Not a square anymore. So we know that our square, is, our circle is still going to touch the sides of the square. So let's uh, draw a line from one, diagonally from one corner to the other, and the same the other way, putting a, a line straight through where they intersect. And that shows us where the circle will touch the square on this side, this side. And now we can do one straight down the middle because it still is straight away, exactly opposite from where we are. So that's why this line is straight. And the circle touches those two points on the square. Now let's connect the dots. See, the bottom is going to be much bigger because it's closest to us. We can erase my drawing, my, my building lines, and we have an ellipse. Now, any cup can be drawn from that shape. Any bowl, and you know there's going to be one down here on the bottom as well. So when I tried to draw something like this, I just put the lid in and I've got my painting jar, water painting jar. You can do a lot of things with circles. I did some doodling. An apple isn't a perfect circle. Like I said, in nature we don't have a lot of perfect circles. But they're good practice. It's good to be able to draw a circle and then alter it to make it into what we want it to be. A pencil is a good example. This one is made out of a piece of wood, so it's not a very perfect circle, but we have a circle on the end, and if I hadn't sharpened this end, I'd have a circle on this end. But the thing is, once we connect them with a tube, we have a cylinder, and that's the next shape we're going to learn to draw. When we're making marks next time, 
we'll be doing cylinders. Many, many things around your house are made in the shape of a cylinder. And we can learn to draw cylinders in different directions, but that's for another time. Thanks for watching.